Hello and welcome to MMW in London. Delighted to be joined by David Zachary of Glassic and Andrico Kodamilidis of Visions Live. Guys, do you want to give yourself a brief introduction? Okay. My name is um, David Zachary. I'm one of the um, uh, pioneers within the um, uh, Google Glass uh, Explorer program. And uh, I started a company called um, a Glassic and we're um, a designing most of the software for um, a Google Glass. Uh, and uh, so, so the, the, the newest uh, software that we designed and we presented was for market research. Thanks, David. I'm Andrico from Visions Live. I'm a director of Visions Live, established company in, uh, in the UK. Uh, we do an online qualitative research platform. So I'm just here to check out these uh, cool toys and see what they can do in the research sector. I have heard of you guys, Visions Live, yeah. <laughs> this is um, a Google Glass. I'm sure you know what it is. That's why you're wearing it. So essentially, uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to turn the screen on, and you want to ask the person if they can see it well, because w essentially, uh, d depending on the angle that y your eyes look at, you got to adjust it. Sure. So can you see it perfectly? C can you see the entire block? Yeah, I see the little uh, screen in front of you. Yeah, so it should, it should say the time, and then just say, OK, glass. OK, glass. Yeah. Uh, so the way that you should uh, think about glass is it's like an imaginary timeline going around in a circle around your head. And so, and depending on the way you scroll, you're either going to see s things that happened, um, uh, things that happened in the past, and the, yeah. and the timeline goes up to th uh, three days in the past, and then things that are currently going on, like the movies that are playing around you, restaurants that are open near you, things like that. And then the main screen, which says the time in OK Glass, is uh, how you can c communicate with it uh, and perform the um, actions that it has. So the w so it's on right now, and the way that you um, uh, turn the screen on is either by tapping the side of it um, or looking up at a 30 degree angle. Right. Yeah, so if you just look up, yeah, and now so it has a time, and you say the command, OK, glass. OK, glass. Uh, Oops. There we go. OK, glass. I see it, and right. I can take a picture. Yeah, so now you have a list of commands, and you just uh, take a picture, so it took a picture. And it did. And then, so for example, if you, wanna, if, you wanted to see if you wanted to see that picture, go back to the home screen. And then you could swipe back and forth. And figure out at the beginning of each day when you put it on uh, where you originate from and where you end up. So if it figures out where your home is, and then it could also fi figure out home is in. So it, it, it always, if you scroll to that page, it'll tell you how many, uh, and it knows if you take the public transportation or you drive or whatever you do to get back home. And it will um, let you know what the current time is with the traffic to get back to that place. Or if and then if you're uh, somewhere foreign, it figures out that your that your base is that hotel. So I'll give you back to the hotel, and then it, it also knows like if you're traveling because I'm traveling, so I'll, I'll actually see that it, it knows it it knows because it scanned my um it, it knows if I got a, co a confirmation for a flight, so it'll say and it's a, a, and you are this many minutes away from where London, so London Heathrow right. terminal, whatever your terminal is at. Interesting. Interesting. So what I'm interested to know is a little bit more about how this um you know how we're seeing this to to be useful in within research, you know, given obviously obviously it gives you a good timeline of all of the events that uh, that have happened in the in the past, and, and there's obviously there's a contextual awareness of of of, of you know where you've you know where you've been, where you are, probably some of your intentions that you're going to do. So what kind of data can we pull out of this, and you know wh what sort of context can we give it? Uh, so my perspective of what what we can do with it is from a computer science perspective. Um, so the, what we can do is the um, like uh, the, the the main type of data that is that is currently received in market research is surveys and mobile surveys, but it all but the and one current problem with that is it's one size fits all, um, but regardless you know uh, uh, of who you're asking and how they use your a product, um, they um, they're being asked the same questions. So one thing that we're using for um, a market research with a, a Google Glass is a type of interactive survey. So what we do, and of course the consumer does know that you're going to do this with them because they consent to it, but there's a level of, sub, uh, of uh, a lot of, s there's a subconscious part to it. So um, uh, one thing we do, for example, is if is um, is we place a QR code or some sort of identification tag on the on a product. So let's say you buy a coffee machine. And so uh, Google Glass, because, and the way this application would work is the camera is not always recording, but it, but it's always able to sense what's going on in this application and many other applications. The video could be going, but it's not actually recording. Is that what you mean? Exactly. 
and, and then it can detect a QR code, um, or and that gives you an, a good idea of what, sort of where you are, perhaps in a in a building, or uh, detects a marker, and then it can do something uh, after it detects that that event. Uh, yes, and then so uh, uh, what it does is it'll start to it start to analyze. Uh, how you are interacting with the device, both the first time you use it and for how wh however, many, however long you want the period of time to be. So it analyzes how you feel towards it, um, how, how you like it, both by speech and the way you interact with it, um, how often you use it, and then after however much time you want to wait, you know, two weeks to one month of collecting data, it will give custom survey questions, one or two questions to the consumer based on how they use your product. So it's Good not... Idea. Exactly. So questions based on the behavior. That's, that's very interesting. And so I suppose even for, it, it can track your eye as well, kind of the position of your, your pupils. Can it do something like that? Yes. Okay. So would it be possible to do, you know, if someone is using a product to sort of see where they're, where they're looking at it and turn it around? Or is that sort of out of the scope of this sort of, uh, the use of this, this platform? Um, yeah, that, that, that's definitely in the scope. That's one of the things I discussed in my um, a presentation that so it is a, 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 it can track your eye, uh, and one thing that we have been uh, doing with it is for to test the effectiveness the effectiveness of a of uh, of a, a a advertisement display in a store, or while you're um, uh, driving in a city, uh, the effectiveness of um, uh, billboards and, uh, and other things. Okay. So and uh, we could do is 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 because we're videotaping and the video is from your line of sight. From that we know. What you were, what what your eye was able to see, and one thing is, it's not zoomed, so it's exactly how you saw it. And then, because we're able to track your uh, a pupil, we can see how long you were looking at the item. If you were simply glancing at it, if you were simply staring at it, or if you were actually engaged in it, and if you were interested in it. Okay. So, uh, and then you could do things like measure recall. You could say, well, we know that you were exposed to these um, these uh, these advertisements or or marketing uh, messages. And what do you recall, you know, having seen on your way to work, for example, things like that, and uh, yeah, exactly, and uh, exactly, and it, it provides. I mean, it, it, it's a little more. Um, it, it it provides a higher level of information than like tr tr traditional methods of having a focus group for you know uh, s an advertisement display of how effective it is, because there are s because you know when when you show them something and then like an hour later ask them the questions based on what they saw, they probably won't like if you ask them the color maybe they won't remember exactly what s how something was but it's possible that they, that they did see it and it did stick in their mind and they were engaged in it. Then you can kind of use that as a hook to bring them back you know to understand sort of how they were feeling or whether they noticed the ad or if it had anything, you know, effect, any effect on them at all, uh, something, anything like that? Uh, yes, and then it, and it also, you know, it goes back to the whole concept of what Glass is trying to achieve, that it's, you know, that technology is great, but the a current problem with technology is that it gets in the way of your life. Like, you, you don't, you don't want to live life always, you know, holding this block of glass and just touching it all the time and looking down. So, you know, this is its technology when you need it. So, like, even even the things like if you receive a text message or an email, it doesn't get in the way. It makes a simple sound. If you want to see it, you look up at the degree angle and it, it makes it appear. It can even read it to you and then it disappears. Uh, yeah, I've got a more general question about glass. Okay. You, you wear glasses, yes. like prescription glasses. Yes. How does that work with Google Glass? Okay, so uh, as you can see, I'm on our little uh, um, animated mannequin. So th th there is a gap between the two nose things, and then uh, there are either sunglasses or prescription glasses that you can get, and you just um, uh, uh, snap them in, and they appear before the um, uh, uh, prism itself. Um, they just sit underneath there. Exactly. Shaped glass. Yeah. Exactly. And then, and one thing to keep in mind is, you know, the Google Glass you see it today is a, is a prototype. So the one that's going to come out is going to have more of a form factor of regular glasses. So. How, I mean, is there a solution if you wear glasses? Uh, yes, uh, definitely when it comes out for consumer release, there will be, but it, this, is, this is not gonna be the form factor. We can't say for sure exactly how it's gonna work or if you'll need to order from Google or if you can use your regular glasses. Thanks, David. Thank you very much for joining us and uh, Andrico as well. Thank you very much.